All right, I'm back. I'm going to show you uh, another demonstration of friction and give you an example problem on it. And so for this, I have this wooden block and I have this spring scale and it's going to measure Newton's and a spring scale has a little spring in here. So when I pull on something, the spring is getting stretched and it's moving that dial. So the harder I pull, the more it stretches the spring and the greater the force. Okay. Spring scale, a, new to a Newton scale. I'm going to hook this up to this block and I'm going to try to slide it to the right. And you're going to notice that you're not going to see, and I'm going to kind of fiddle with this a little bit. Sorry about that. Uh, you're going to notice it doesn't take a lot of effort to slide it. So to help emphasize this, I'm going to increase that force that's holding the surfaces together. I understand the surfaces, this whiteboard and this piece of wood. The two surfaces are the whiteboard and the piece of wood. And so I am going to increase the force that's holding it together. And since it's vertical, it's straight down, I need to increase more force down to increase that force holding it together, which is that normal force. Right? So I'm going to put a couple kilogram masses on here. So I'm putting an additional 2,000 kilograms on here. That's going to increase that downward weight by quite a bit. And so now when I go to pull it to the right, now when I go to pull it to the right, uh, you can see that there's a pretty large force here now. I'm going to increase, I've done this a few times, you're going to see right in this middle region here, when I get there is when it's going to start to break free. I'm going to do it a few times, I want you to pay attention to what you see here. So I'm going to pull, 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 there we go, and I set the jump, move. Look at that again. Pay attention to that force. When it gets about here is when it starts to move. I want you to think about what, ha what does that needle do once this starts to move? Interesting, right? Let's do it again, just in case that was a random fluke, and... Huh. Yeah. The maximum force of static... Well, let's look at that too. As I start to pull harder and harder, it's it's in equilibrium. So here I'm at two newtons. It's in equilibrium. So if I'm pulling to the right with two newtons, what's the friction force acting on it? Yeah, two newtons. And that's going to continue to climb. Friction force is climbing, 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 climbing. I get to a spot where I break that maximum static, which is right about seven newtons, a little bit more, or right close to eight newtons. I've now overcome the static force and immediately that needle dropped. It went down to like four and I had to actually stop pulling uh, on it so it stays at constant velocity. So here at constant speed and it's kind of hard to show in the small region of space, but to slide across this table at constant velocity it only took four newtons. Okay, let's look at it again. You might need to slow the video down. Seven or eight newtons is where it broke free of the static and only about four newtons was required to get the travel constant velocity. So that shows that static force climbs until we get to the max value, and then that kinetic force is lower. If I were to graph this, it would look very much like that other graph in that other video, which I'm not going to do for you. Makes sense, right? So another question students tend to have is, well, or a random question that comes up in a Regents exam or an AP exam is, well, what happens if I change the surface from the large surface to the more narrow surface? Students almost always will say the force of friction is going to drop. There's less surface in contact. Remember the two rules, the type of surface and the force holding it together. Well, is the force holding it together going to change? Don't we still have the same amount of weight down as we did in the other scenario? I mean, I have... 2,000 kilograms plus whatever the mass of the, the block is. I'm not going to quantify any of this any more than that. So I have weight down, so there's a normal force pushing up to support that. I'm not changing that, am I? How about the type of the two surfaces? I'm still on my whiteboard, and it's still wood, right? So, yeah. I mean, if you think about that definition, the force of static friction or kinetic friction shouldn't change. Let's see if it does. Let's watch it. Remember, it was right around 7 or 8, depending on if I jump a little bit. Hey, there we go. It seemed pretty much the same, didn't it? Let's go. Uh, let's, okay, getting, 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 right about, oh yeah, close to 8, right around 4 newtons, give or take a little bit. And uh, the small changes, and this is where it gets annoying with friction, the small changes will depend on where on the surface. So if I'm staying consistent on the where I place it on the whiteboard, it should be pretty pretty consistent. Yeah, it's right about 8 to 4. So the surface area won't change. And if I could get it on the corner, it would do the same thing. The surface area will not affect the force of friction or the coefficient of friction. Keep that in mind, okay? Uh, the only two things that will affect the force of friction would be the uh, normal force and the, the actual surface. And uh, another bit to tell you is that coefficient value, mu, in each scenario I've given you, will not change. Of course, it'll change from mu s to mu k, 
but the mu k will stay constant while it's moving, and the mu s will stay constant while it's moving. Uh, whether it's on uh, this surface, this surface, whether I have no mass on it or more mass on it, adding more and more and more weight or more and more force holding it together will increase the force of friction. You write that out. F F equals mu F N. So as F N goes up, that force of friction goes up, but that mu value won't change. So if I were to rearrange this for mu, you're going to see it's always a ratio of the force of friction to the normal force. This won't change unless the surface changes. So even if I were to put this on an incline, and I'll do a whole video on incline planes, even if I were to put this on an incline, sure, the force of friction will probably change because we've got these other effects in there that I'll get into, but the coefficient won't, well, because remember, that's the types of surfaces. Don't fall for the trap. They're going to want to get you to fall for that trap. What will get the coefficient to change, of course, will be changing the types of surface. So I've got this little board here. It's got three, technically four different materials on it. Uh, we've got the sandpaper type material. We've got this rubber type material, which is getting a little gross. And then we've got this cork board, and this is just cardboard down here. If I were to take this block and put it on the sand, you can imagine, uh, and let's put the same two masses on there, you can imagine that that force required to get it to move is going to change. Change. Now think about it, the binding force, the force that's holding this block to the sandpaper together, that's not changing. The normal force is the same in this example as it was when it was just on the whiteboard. So in this example, the thing that should be different is the mu value because the surfaces are different. We're now looking at wood on sandpaper, not wood on whiteboard. And so we should see, instead of it breaking at 7 or 8, my guess is, and I know this is I've done it already, my guess is the force of friction to get it to move will be much higher. Let's take a look. I'm pulling pretty hard on it. It's not going anywhere. I've got to push down this paper pretty hard to get to, so that doesn't slide. I'm at 14, 15, 16, yeah, right about 16. And you see the static uh, was about 16, and the kinetic dropped to, I don't know, that looked like right around 14 or so. I'm not going to be too exact with this. I'm not too worried about that. It's not a lab that I'm doing. 16, and then it breaks right about 14 to keep it in its motion. And I can do this for the rubber and the cork. I'm just going to do this really quick. Uh, you can see an increase, increase. Okay, right around 15 gets the move. Nope. Wow, this is, whew, the rubber is really tough. And actually, I, I think I have too much weight in the rubble. I can see the rubber is starting to buckle up, so I'm getting bumps in here. Uh, but you get the point, I think, so I'm not really worried about it. If this was a lab, I'd probably be using a digital probe, so it would be a little bit more accurate. And... Yeah, it's just buckling up. This won't work. I see the whole thing's moving. Let's try cork. Let's see if the cork board works. Yeah, there. See it drop. So it was close to the whiteboard, wasn't it, though? Look at it. It was right around 8 to 9 newtons. Yeah, it was close to 7 or 8, actually. This is very similar to the whiteboard. Yeah, very similar to the whiteboard. Of course, the kinetic is different, though. Look at that. It's only, it only takes about 6 newtons to get it to slide across the cork board, where it was only 4 for the whiteboard. But it took about 8 to get it to start. All right, I think that emphasizes this. Uh, what affects the force of friction, the surfaces, and the holding, the uh, force binding it together? Uh, what affects the coefficient of friction? Uh, just the surface itself. Do you got it? Uh, you know, I lied in the beginning of this, and I do that a lot for these videos. I'm sorry. I am going to stop this video here and give you a clean video uh, with the example problem. So that's it. I hope this helped. Thank you.